today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's great to be here today and it's great to have you all. You are welcome to Mbabane Bible Baptist Church. Uh, so today I'd like for us to turn our Bibles to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, I'll start reading from verse 25. <clears throat> and when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when, when comest thou hither? And Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not, me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Hey, let's close eyes and pray. Thank you, Father, for uh, this uh, time that we have today. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us. Thank you, Father, for reminding us about the importance of your word. I pray, Father, that uh, and now as we open up your word, may your spirit be here. May your spirit give us understanding. I pray, Father, that you may uh, direct us, guide us, show us, Father, uh, in which way we ought to walk. I pray these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, in verse 25 there, we see, okay, so just to give you the context, before, um, before we get to the, our, our scripture for today, it's when Jesus Christ had, had fed this multitude of people that had come to, to hear the word of God. Well, you know, they were, they were preaching the word of God to, the, to this multitude of people. And then uh, the, the Lord then uh, fed these people. But after, after feeding them, he then went to the other side. The Bible says, and, and it seemed like they were, uh, they were in a valley. Uh, in a valley such that there was a mountain on this side and a mountain on that side. And a river in between, like most valleys. So he went to the other side. And uh, when the people found him on the other side, that's where we are now in verse 25. And the Bible says, and when they found him on the other side, they said unto him, Rabbi. And as you remember, we looked at that, how, how people tend to call Jesus Christ master. That word Rabbi means master. People have that tendency to call Jesus Christ master. And we've looked at that uh, uh, last week about how um, people tend to say with their mouths, master, but inside their hearts, that's not the case. They're not, they, they haven't received him as their Lord. And master. However, here's another group of people. They come to him and say, "Oh, Rabbi, when when did you come here? You know, you try, and it, when I when I read the story, I just I just picture it, uh, you know, in my mind uh, as you know how the scenario actually was. And you see how people have always been the same. Mm -hmm. People have always been the same. The, the same way people are today are the same way they were back in biblical times." And then also even of different cultures, people are generally the same. Now these people come to Jesus Christ, and I've, I've mentioned this over and over, and I'll keep saying it because it just boggles my mind to think about it. That, you know, whenever you're speaking to Jesus Christ, you're talking to someone who knows what you're about to say, you're talking to someone who knows what your intentions are, you're talking to someone who knows the state of your heart. So these people come to and they say, oh, master, when did you come here? You know how people, when people want to ask you for money, I don't know if you've been in this situation before, but when people want to ask you for money, first, there are two things that will often happen. They'll, they'll call you by a very nice word, oh, mpazi, oh, mutlomtzala, oh, oh, trayami, askoko, ayamoena, ah, minayla otiam. You know, they'll always try to call you by something that will make you feel good. Right? So even with Jesus Christ, they come and they, they, they say something that will make them feel, Oh, Rabbi! Then, you know, the, the, the small conversation, you know, comes up. Hey, when did you come here? Just the same way people are. Oh, Brian, come on, John. Oh, grand. Hey, got an act to eat now. Hey, oh, shop. Hey, my toy, guys. Hey, I'm going to fly me a cool exit. You know, oh, it's just a small talk, you know, just to start the conversation so that they can then... And when, when they're speaking to Jesus Christ, they're like, Oh, Rabbi, when did you come here? Oh, and all of that. Jesus Christ just goes straight to the point with them. 
In verse 25, Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat the loaves and were filled. I know you guys are here, you're wanting to ask for more food. And that's the reason why you're seeking for me. You're not seeking for me because you saw the miracles that I did. You're not seeking me because of the preaching that you heard. Remember that back in the Bible, that's the reason why they perform miracles. If you go and you study carefully the New Testament, whenever a miracle was performed, before that, there was the preaching of the Word of God. So, it's not, and so when Jesus Christ says, you're not seeking me because you saw the miracles, it implies that they also heard the Word of God. You're not seeking me because of that. But you're seeking me because you ate the loaves and were full. What, what is your intention for seeking Jesus Christ? And, and, and once again, just the same as with these people, when, when they were seeking him and he was here physically, Jesus Christ knew what they were all about. So even today, if you claim to be seeking Jesus Christ, what are your intentions? If your intentions are you're seeking him because of what you can get from him, materialistic things, Jesus Christ knows that already. You cannot fool him. You cannot trick him. You cannot bribe him. He knows the state of your heart. And if you're seeking Jesus Christ because of what you, the, material, the materialistic things you want of this world, he's going to reject you. Because that's not what Jesus Christ is about. That's not what Jesus Christ is offering. That's not what he is here for. And then when you see um, the, the scripture and what happened here, I like it because it shows you the personality of Jesus Christ. What, what, what he's all about, what's important to him. He wants to give people his word. That's what's important to him. All these other things that might come after, such as them getting food, it's, it's just, it's just an, an extra, but it's not what he was here to give. He was not here to feed people, but he was here to give them the word of God. Amen. Why are you seeking Jesus Christ? And it's very sad because the, in, in, in many places when you go, and, and you know places that call themselves churches, You'll find that they are they, they are, are, are are motivating people to seek after the things of this world. While as we see that that is not Jesus Christ's personality. Jesus Christ is all about His Word, and I was so blessed today. Uh, I don't know if you 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 noticed this, but the Lord wants us to remember the importance of His Word today. Uh, to me, that is very clear. It was very clear from the very beginning, from the hymns that was the hymns that were sung, from from the preaching in the first service to the devotion, and and also my morning devotion this morning at, when I was at home was also about the word of God. And I was like, Lord, I hear you loud and clear. The Lord wants us to remember how important His word is. When you come here to church. What are you here for? Are you here to see the people? Are you here to have a, a social experience? That shouldn't be the case. Well, you know, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's good for us to socialize and be happy to see each other. But all of us should have that the most, the most important thing or the real reason why we are here is to hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. It's to hear it, it's to receive it. And it's to obey it. That is why we're here. <laughs> so <clears throat> Jesus Christ uh, 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 then continues here to, to speak about, because now these, these people have, have brought this up, right? This is the state of their heart, and this is uh, something that they're battling with, and now Jesus Christ wants to address it. In verse 27, uh, Jesus then says, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said, Jesus answered and said unto them, 
This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They, they said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then they said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said, but I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. Okay, so that, that, that's now uh, the, the conversation, the back and forth that happens between uh, Jesus Christ and this, this group of people, this multitude of people that have, had come to him because they wanted food. So Jesus Christ, uh, he, he starts off by giving them a very important lesson. He says to them, Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. This is a, a very important concept. And I was thinking about it even on Friday, um, when, when, when you go to town and you, you meet all these students and um, uh, people who, who most of them are high school students. And... I was talking to these two ladies on Friday and, uh, you know, we went through the survey. I could tell that, you know, they read the Bible and all of that, just generally speaking. But then when I asked them that, uh, you know, if, if you were to stand before God, would he say uh, you're going to heaven or hell? Their answer was, well, you know, I'm not sure, maybe heaven. And, you know, the, the thought came to me as they were giving that answer that, we, we need to be prepared, we need to be sure about our eternal destination. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when we think of these high school students, uh, everyone here, or most here, uh, are, are almost either almost done with high school or are done with school or, or in college. But to think about how much time we spend in school. Have you ever thought about that? How much time we spend in school? You spend about 12 years. Uh, preparing for university, right? Then you go to university and you spend maybe potentially another five years. So altogether, it's about 17 years of your life that you spend in school. For, for, for some people, that's more than half their lives. <coughs> and, and you go to school for about 17 years, and that 17 years, you go to school, you're, you're preparing for, for, for your, your future here on earth. You're preparing for a job that you can then work for maybe about 15 years. So you spend 17 years spending, uh, preparing for 15 years of your adult life. And you just think about how short that 15 years is as opposed to eternity. How, how, how important, how much more important is it for us to prepare for eternity than to prepare for our future here on earth? In fact, our future here on earth is not even guaranteed. It is very sad when a young person dies uh, because they had, people like to say they had their, li their whole lives in, ahead of them. They had not even started living the life that they had been preparing for. And that happens to many people. Which is why it is more important for us to prepare for eternity. Because that time when we will be on the other side of the grave could be at any moment. So that's why Jesus Christ is telling these people that you should labor not. You labor not for the meat which perishes. So there, 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 are two, there are two different types of bread here. There's the bread of life, and then there's the bread of the flesh, the bread which we eat. 
So the, 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 here, here are we are going to sort of contrast between those two, given what Jesus Christ says in verse 26 and verse 27. We see that uh, the, the bread of the flesh is what people seek instead of Christ. And we see that in verse 26, which we've already read, where Jesus Christ says that you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you ate the loaves and, and they were filled. So people are, see, are, are seeking for the bread of the flesh instead of Christ. While as the bread of life, people seek because of Christ. You seek it because of Christ. We see that also in, in verse 26. Where Jesus Christ is a sort of implying that they ought to have been seeking him because of the miracles that he performed. And then the next thing we see is in verse 27, that the bread of the flesh perishes. Okay, the, the bread of the flesh perishes. It's, it's, it's not everlasting like the bread of life. The bread of life is everlasting. And he, Jesus Christ says there that um, this bread it endureth unto everlasting life. So which one would you rather work so hard for? Would you rather work hard for the bread which will perish, or would you rather work hard for the bread which endureth unto everlasting life? So that is that is the, that is uh, your your choice to make. That that is the lesson that Jesus Christ wanted to teach about the bread of the bread, right? The two types of bread. Are you going to be working hard for the things that you can achieve here on earth, or would you be working hard? For treasures in heaven. But then now Jesus Christ continues because when, after he has after he says this, then the people said unto him, Well, uh, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? And, and and once again, this is so like people today as well. People people think that um, they can just go from being of the world to directly working for God. And, and they miss the whole idea of you need to first receive him, you need to first be born again before you can serve the Lord. People think that, oh, um, whenever, you know, they're feeling guilty about their lives, the first thing they think is, oh, let me just go and let me serve the Lord, let me just do the works of God. Well, Jesus Christ says to them in verse 29, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who he had sent. The first thing you need to do, the first work of God for you as a person who has not been born again, is for you to believe on him who God has sent. You need to believe on Jesus Christ. You need to be born again. Before you can work, you need to first believe on Jesus Christ. And this is all going to come together, by the way. Jesus Christ is still teaching them about the bread of life. And then uh, in, in, in verse 30, he then, then said therefore unto, sorry, they said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto thee, Moses gave you not bread from heaven, but my father giveth you true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. So Jesus Christ is trying to explain, they're still not getting the point. They're still not understanding what is the difference between the bread of life and the bread of the flesh. Because uh, now when Jesus Christ tells them about believing on, uh, on him, they are like, oh no, show us a sign so that we might believe on thee. Because, uh, you know, our fathers, they had a sign of which uh, Moses gave, gave them bread from heaven. And Jesus says, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. That bread came from God. It is God that will give you bread from heaven. Right? And then he continues to even say that uh, the, this is the bread of God. Remember, he's still trying to differentiate for them between the bread of life and the bread, bread of the flesh. He says that um, the bread of God is he, uh, he's getting even more specific now, that this bread is about symbolicism. It's, it's not literal bread. But he says it is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. So now these people are like, okay, uh, so we see that this is a different type of bread. This is not the bread we were thinking of. Well, then give us the bread. 
you know, it reminds me of uh, the woman of Samaria as well. Who, said, who after hearing about living water then said, okay, give me that, this water that I might not thirst. Once, once, you, once you hear about the word of God, that should be our natural response, is that we should want to receive it. We should want to, we should want to take it in, we should want to possess it. Well, then in verse 35, which is what I wanted us to, to get to, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So, so all along he had been trying to teach them, trying to bring them to this point where they understand between the bread of, of life and the bread of the flesh, and then, and, and, you know, he's, he's sort of leading them, he's guiding them, because Jesus Christ is such a good teacher. All these things that he's saying is to lead them and guide them to this point at the end where he then says that I am the bread of life. So now, knowing that Jesus Christ is the bread of life, we can then go back and, and, and look at what he has been saying all along about this bread and understand that this is Jesus Christ. Well, the first thing is that um, the, the bread of life people seek because of Christ, because the bread of life is Christ. We also see that the bread of the life will endure unto everlasting life. That's Jesus Christ. He lives forever. And He is the one who can give everlasting life. And we also see that um, God is the one that gives people this bread. It is God who has given us Jesus Christ. God gave Jesus Christ to us to die for our sins. And we also see that... Um, this bread of life, which is given by God, came down from heaven. And if you continue reading, we won't get to this, but if you continue reading the chapter, you see how, you know, that they started murmuring about how also he's saying that he came down from heaven. But we know that, uh, we know his mother, we know his father, we know where he comes from. He didn't come down from heaven. These people had already rejected Jesus Christ and that he came from heaven and that he was sent by God. But however, he was trying to teach them that he is the bread of life. And then who, who gives the bread of life? It is the Son of Man. We see that in verse 27. Labor not for, the, I'll read it again, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. So the Son of Man, as I said, people seek it because of Christ. The, the person who gives this bread is the Son of Man because Jesus Christ gave himself to us. And then we also see that you need to eat the bread before you can work. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed that illustration in the first service where, where, where we are looking at how if you are going to a battle, if you are going to war, and you have not had anything to eat, you're not going to do very well. Yeah. You're not going to be, have the strength to perform. So even when working, even when, when, when doing work of the Lord, you need to eat the bread. These people were asking, I remember earlier, they were saying, well, what can we do so that we can do the works of God? Well, the first thing you need to do before you work is you need to eat the bread of life. You cannot serve God if you have not received Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, 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 is, that is the way it is. And you, can, you, you need to eat the bread before you can work. And then um, also we see that the bread, this bread is from heaven. Jesus Christ is from heaven. Jesus Christ didn't ex only start to exist when he was born here on earth. Jesus Christ was in heaven even before he was born. But he came down from heaven because he had a will to accomplish. He was sent by his father. So um, now let's, let's look at this whole uh, thing about the manna. Where does the manna come into play? And then this multitude, well, they were the ones that actually brought up the manna. They brought up that topic and, and clearly they didn't even understand what the manna was all about. But they were like, oh no, First, the first thing that they missed already was that they thought the manna was from Moses. And Moses is not the one. The, the things that Moses was able to do in the wilderness, it wasn't by his own power. 
God is the one that enabled him to do those things. So even the manna, that manna came from God. But now how does the manna relate to Jesus Christ as the bread of life? Well, let's, let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 16. So we can read, read that scripture where um, they received the manna from heaven. Let's go to Exodus chapter 16. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 16, I'll start reading from verse 15. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, this is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Even Moses himself told them that this bread is not from me. This, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Then verse 16 says, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather, gather of it every man according to his eating, and omer for every man according to the number of of your persons, take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had, not, had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, Let no man leave this till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wrought with them. Okay, so this is, this is uh, where the Bible uh, speaks about how the, the children of Israel received this manna. So as I said, I, I, I was curious when reading where the manna comes into play with Jesus Christ teaching them about the bread of life. But of course, here yeah, we see that, that even this bread, this manna was bread which came from God, was given to them by the Lord. The Lord wanted to paint a picture with giving them manna. He wanted to paint a picture of the bread of life which was to come. And as we've read from John, that the bread of life is Jesus Christ. So now let, let's, let's see, it's actually so cool, so interesting to, to contrast here between what happened in, in Exodus 16 and what happened in, in John as we have read. So let, let, let's break this, uh, this chapter down and see how it relates to uh, Jesus Christ as the bread of life. In verse 15, uh, we see that the manna was come from the Lord, we've already spoken about that. Um, but then also in verse 16, we see that the manna was to be gathered according to their eating. Right? Every man was to, was to gather according to what, what they want to, to, to eat or what they can eat. You know, some people eat a lot, you know, like me. Right, and so and then Peter, you know, we eat a lot. <laughs> and then there are some people who don't eat a lot. Right? But everyone gathered the manna according to what they what they wanted, what they what they could take, what they wanted to eat. It's the same as with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is available for everyone to receive him. Jesus Christ wants to have a relationship with everyone. But however, how close you get to Jesus Christ is up to you. The Bible says, draw, draw nigh unto God and God will draw nigh unto you. With Jesus Christ, he, he, he will give you as much as you want of Him. If you want little of Him, He will give you little. But if you want much more, He will give you more. So I'd, I'd like to challenge you on this. And this is, this is speaking, by the way, about those who are saved. You have been saved already. Now we're talking about how close you are with Jesus Christ. The relationship that you and Jesus Christ have. Because you, if you have not been born again, you don't have a relationship with Him. You have to start by receiving Him. Then once you have received Him, it's about how close you are with Him. 
right? And you choose how close you want to be with Jesus Christ. And uh, if, if, if you think about how today, for example, as I said, it's clear God wants us to think about His Word and how important His Word is. And you know how we, 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 we always think about the importance of reading the Word of God every day. We need to read the Word of God every day. But you know what? It's not even just really about reading the Word of God, okay? Because you know that there are some people who read the Word of God as a chore. That are, you know, okay, uh, I have to read the Word of God today, uh, I have to read a chapter, so, okay, let's get on with it, and then, uh, da, 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 okay, shut up, I'm done with my chapter, now I can go. And you have, not, you have not benefited anything spiritually out of that. So it's not even just about the act of performing the act of reading the Word of God. What's it, what it's really about is getting close to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Here, here's a thought. I had never thought about it this way until I was preparing for this lesson. But you remember the model prayer, right? Our Father who art in heaven, we've repeated it so many times in primary and high school, right? And in that prayer, Jesus Christ said we ought to thank the Lord or and ask the Lord, forgive us this day our daily bread. And, uh, you know, that, that, could, that could mean uh, speaking about, because we are always taught that it means the bread that we're going to eat today. And, and that is a good thing. We, we ought to ask God for bread. We ought to ask God for the food that we're going to receive every day. We ought to be thankful for it. We ought to be thankful for the fact that God provides us with food. But I believe that there is more to that request. I also I believe that the daily bread is Jesus Christ. He is the bread of life. He is the manna. And if you go back and continue reading Exodus 16, you'll see that they had that manna every day. And Moses told them not to take more, like, don't take bread out, I'm going to take more so I can have some tomorrow. No, he said, take enough for today. It was only on the sixth day that they would take double because they were not to work on the seventh. But however, they would only take for that day. So they had this daily manna. They had this daily morning manna. And Jesus Christ said that he is the bread of life. I believe that that daily bread that we ought to ask, ask God for every day is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, help me today to be closer to Jesus Christ. Help me today to be more like him. Okay, so some people, that whole daily bread thing, they interpret it to be the Word of God. And then I, I, I think that's also correct, because our intention when reading the Word of God is, should be for us to get close to Jesus Christ. Give us this day our daily bread. Every day we ought to be desiring that bread. Every day we ought to be desiring to get closer to Jesus Christ. And, and how much you take, it's up to you. I think of that, the, the story of, of uh, I'm just not very good with names and I haven't read the story in a long time, but uh, the, the story of that lady who had to bring all those uh, vessels, right, that were going to be filled with oil. And, and the, in that scripture, the Bible says that she, she was supposed to bring her vessels, not a few, as many as she could find. And she went and she got even from her neighbors and got all these vessels. And all the vessels that she had were filled with oil. So even with you, if that oil represents Jesus Christ and the vessel represents your life, if you're only going to bring a little vessel, that small vessel will be filled and that's all you'll have. But if you bring a bigger vessel, that vessel will also be filled. Jesus Christ will give you as much of Him as you want. It's up to you to, to, to avail yourself to that. Okay, and then also it's interesting to see how um, even for those that had little vessels, or even those that took little manna, they, they didn't lack any. And those that took too much or a lot, they, nothing was, was, was overflowed, nothing was too, like, they were able to consume everything um, that they took, everything that everyone gathered. 
And then uh, now in verse 19, let's look at verse 19. Uh, we've already spoken briefly about this, but in verse 19, And Moses said, on, said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. So Moses told them that they should take the manna, that's enough for that day, and no man should leave it till the morning. As I said earlier, no one was supposed to take for this morning and the following morning. Uh, but now, when, when I saw that, what was the point of the Lord only giving them manna for that day? And telling them to only take manna for that day? I, I believe that there are two reasons. One, one of the reasons is, God, God wants to put us in a place where we're always relying on Him. Which is why we, we, we don't know the future. We don't know what's coming. We, we, we can't see tomorrow. And God doesn't tell us what's going to happen tomorrow. Because he, he wants us to rely on Him. Yeah. Jesus Christ gave them manna only for that day so that they would have faith in Him for, them, for, for God to provide manna for tomorrow. And that's how we are to live as well. We, we like to take everything upon ourselves, take everything in, uh, like upon our own strength. Why don't we just rely on God? Now, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we should not plan for the future. Okay? Don't get me wrong. Planning for the future is very important. But however, we should understand that it's only God that can control the future. I can prepare myself mentally for the future, but it's, it's not up to me. I need to trust God. I need to trust God to, first of all, help me to plan for that future. Remember that it is God who worketh in us both to will and to do His good pleasure. So we should trust God to help us, first of all, to will, to plan for the future. But for the execution of that plan, we should be trusting God for. It's not up to our own strength, our own mind. God would only give them manna for that day. And, and also that manna, they had to eat it on that day. They couldn't not eat it on that day and plan to eat it tomorrow. What that tells me about is procrastination. Right? Jesus Christ wants us to have a daily relationship with Him. When God wants to speak to you and He wants to speak to you now, you need to give Him that opportunity. You need to sit down at His feet at that time and not say, Oh no, I'll do it tomorrow. When they left the manna for tomorrow, the Bible says it stank and it bred worms. Imagine if there was a consequence like that for our procrastination. We ought not to procrastinate. If they didn't eat the bread, lastly, if they didn't eat the bread, they would perish. Remember that they were in the wilderness, they were hungry, they had no other food. They had to eat the manna so that they could be sustained. Just like how if you have been born again, you need to have a good relationship with God. Otherwise, you'll find yourself in trouble. You'll find yourself separated from God if you don't have a good relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to have a good relationship with Jesus Christ and we need to have a good relationship with Him Every day, the daily bread, the daily manna, the bread of life. And, and, and uh, remember, this is the bread which doesn't perish. Jesus Christ is that bread. And God has given you that bread from heaven. Jesus Christ, as the bread of life, that bread is on the floor. Available for anyone to take it. It's up to you to go and pick up that bread. And it's up to you how much of that bread you will pick up. So let, let me ask you that question today. Have, have you received that bread of life? Or are you just laboring for the meat which perishes? Have you received Jesus Christ? And if you have received Jesus Christ... How, how, how much of, how close a relationship do you have with Him? Uh, are, are, you, are you actively 
trying every day to be closer and closer to Christ? Are, 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 you, are you trying every day to, to bring a bigger vessel for Him to fill you with? Oh, that, that's, that's what the Lord desires. For you to have this daily bread and as much as you can take. As much as you want. 